Qualifying for the Austrian Grand Prix is over and yes, Max Verstappen is once again on pole position, but he claimed it by less than a tenth of a second from Charles Leclerc in the Ferrari, making it one of the closest qualifying sessions of the year, and that means it is time for my data analysis from a crazy qualifying. Now, let's get to the video. As usual, I'll be talking about the likes of Ferrari, Aston Martin, Mercedes and Red Bull a little bit later on, so stick around for that. Due to the Red Bull ring being a sprint weekend, F1 has had qualifying for the main Grand Prix on a Friday, meaning that teams only had one hour to get the cars ready for the session. Luckily for the teams, the rain that was expected to arrive did not materialise, so they were able to maximise that amount of time that they were on track to be ready for qualifying, which leads to the question, which teams are looking good and which teams are not looking so good after qualifying? Well, one team that is really struggling was, once again, sadly for them, the Alpha Tauri team, as it is now starting to feel like they are now the slowest team in Formula 1, and their chassis is falling further and further behind of the rest of the pack, as the other teams continue to develop their cars and bring upgrades. But where were they slower? Well, to find out, I have brought up the fastest lap times from Alpha Tauri drivers, and also Valtteri Bottas in the Alfa Romeo. And what can we see? Well, what we see is that sadly, not only is the Alfa Tauri very slow in a straight line due to the induced drag on the car, but also they have to slow down more than the Alfa Romeo driver, and also Bottas is able to get to full power faster than both Sonoda and De Free, meaning that the Alfa Tauri drivers are losing time compared to Bottas pretty much everywhere. For the AlphaTauri team, they will be hoping that Sonoda can put in another impressive performance, but due to them not bringing a raft of changes, the team is falling further and further behind, and I believe they will now finish last in the Constructors' Championship and save everything they can for next year, when the team moves closer to the design of Red Bull and AlphaTauri is rebranded. One team that can be very happy with today's qualifying as it seems like they have finally taken a massive step forward is the McLaren team. The Papaya team brought a major upgrade to the car, but they only brought it to one of their two drivers as Lando Norris received the new car and Oscar Piastri will likely have to wait until Silverstone before he gets the upgrade. But that means we can now compare both of the drivers fastest laps to see what we can learn. From this, we can see fairly clearly where Norris is faster than Piastri. Through the higher speed sections, it becomes a lot clearer that Norris has a lot more confidence than his teammate, and is therefore able to carry much more speed through the corners. Not only this, but Norris is much better on the brakes, meaning that when going into the heaviest braking zone on the circuit, Norris makes up the majority of his advantage. One of the McLaren's biggest downfalls all year long has been the team's lack of ability in a straight line, as they have low top speed due to the high amounts of drag. However, this weekend, the team has actually been one of the strongest teams in a straight line for the first time in what feels like quite a while, which we can see when looking at this graph provided by Formula Data Analysis. We saw that Norris was a missile over one lap in Spain, but was unable to hold it on for the race itself. There are still question marks over the race distance for McLaren, but this does certainly look like a positive step forward, and if they are faster in a straight line, then they may finally be able to overtake the cars ahead during the race. Another team which can be happy with their qualifying despite the finishing position is the Williams team, for Alexander Albon, as once again the Williams were the fastest car in a straight line, which could bode very well for them in the Grand Prix, provided they can keep it all together. When we compare the fastest legal lap of Albon to the Haas of Hulkenberg, despite the fact Hulkenberg was quicker, we can see that actually the Williams is all dominant down the straights, and had the time not been deleted for Albon, then his deleted lap time would have seen him ahead of the Haas, and would likely have been the second fastest midfield driver behind the McLaren of Norris today. For Williams, this is another performance that they can be satisfied with as it takes them forward and they will be in a good position for the main Grand Prix if the race itself is fully dry and I do think Albon can score some good points on Sunday. I just want to say if you are enjoying the video, I'd greatly appreciate it if you just hit the like button and subscribe for more F1 content. I am well on my way to two and a half thousand subscribers and I would greatly appreciate it if you just tap that little sub button for more content. Now, 
let's get back to the video and let's talk about the top four teams and let's start with Ferrari. For Ferrari, the Austrian Grand Prix was about as perfect of a qualifying session as the team could have hoped for, as Charles Leclerc was within one tenth of a second to Max Verstappen, and teammate Carlos Sainz was in third place less than two tenths from pole position. And when we compare the fastest lap of Sainz to Leclerc, we can see where the difference between the two drivers are. I will be comparing Max and Leclerc later on, but I just wanted to compare the teammates for now. Rather surprisingly, Leclerc was faster than his teammate around the vast majority of the circuits on the final lap, but when you look at all of their laps, Sainz was actually faster throughout the session. But the fastest lap was all about Leclerc. You can see in the data as well, Leclerc was able to carry a vast amount of speed through the corners as he was throwing everything at the Ferrari. Luckily for Leclerc, this time he managed to not throw the car into the wall, but he was absolutely on the ragged edge of what the car could do. During the sprint tomorrow, we will get a better idea as to whether or not Ferrari can compete over the course of a stint. But right now, things are looking good for the team as they've brought some nice little upgrades to the car for this weekend. For Aston Martin, arguably you could say that the Red Bull ring qualifying was a bit of a letdown, as both Stroll and Alonso were beaten by both the Ferraris, the Mercedes of Lewis Hamilton, Lando Norris and Max Verstappen, and Alonso was even beaten by his teammate, which is a bit of a rarity, but in some ways it should not be a huge surprise. I did mention in my preview and predictions video, Aston Martin will struggle in the higher speed corner sections, and when you look at the fastest lap times from Norris and Stroll, you can see that that is precisely what happened, particularly through the final two corners, which are very high speed. The McLaren is actually significantly faster than the Aston Martin through this section, and this could be an issue for them in the race. It's also an issue for Aston Martin in the sense that McLaren is also faster than them in a straight line, which is something that we have not really seen so far this year. For Alonso, today was certainly disappointing, but thankfully for Fernando, sprint day is due to be wet, and he excels in the tricky wet conditions, and the Aston Martin will be well suited to a wet track due to the mechanical grip of the car. So he should be able to score some good points from sprint day that he may be sadly missing out on in the main Grand Prix. For Mercedes, Saturday was a tale of two halves, as George Russell was massively off the pace and dropped out in Q2. And when we compare the fastest lap time between Hamilton and Russell, you can see that Russell just cannot carry as much speed as Hamilton through the higher speed corners. Hamilton is massively faster through sector two and going into the final couple of corners. Russell has certainly been struggling a lot more than his teammates since the car was changed in Monaco. For Lewis Hamilton, he was another driver that was behind Norris, but the Mercedes has always been much stronger in the race on a Sunday, and the team will be very confident that Hamilton can at least get one of the places on the podium in the main Grand Prix. Whereas for George Russell, I have a feeling it will be a recovery drive, but I do think it will be a recovery drive that will see him get some good points, as I can see the Mercedes driver of Russell finishing in the top Five. Finally, for the Red Bull team, it was another weekend which was incredibly disappointing for one driver and brilliant for the other, as yet again Sergio Perez finds himself eliminated in Q2, whereas Verstappen was the fastest driver overall. This time for Perez, it was down to track limits as opposed to him actually being slow, but whilst Verstappen took pole, he was incredibly close to not actually being there, as Charles Leclerc in the Ferrari was right behind him. So let's take a look at the fastest lap between the two drivers. Rather surprisingly, when you take a look at these two laps, Leclerc is faster through the high-speed corners in the final part of the lap, which, as I said earlier, we could probably see given how committed he was. But also, Leclerc was faster on the exit of T1, probably down to Verstappen not quite getting as good of an exit as he should have. Verstappen though was strong through sector two, and this is where he secured pole position for the Grand Prix. Red Bull can breathe a sigh of relief, but once again, we can see that the rivals are slowly closing the gap. So, what did we learn from qualifying? Alpha Tauri are now probably the slowest team overall. 
McLaren's upgrade is looking very promising as they are looking to fight back against the Alpine team in the midfield. And Ferrari's upgraded car this weekend seems to be pointing them closer to the Red Bull team that are in front of them. So I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, as always, comment, leave a like and subscribe for more F1 content. Thank you all so much for watching.